Hi guys, today we're going to take a quick look at how to install Ubuntu Core on a virtual machine. Now, Ubuntu Core is commonly used in embedded systems, such as IoT devices. I want to show you how to install it on a virtual machine so you can work with it as you would if you're programming or something like that. So you don't have to have a physical device to actually program against Ubuntu Core and use it. It's actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to be using VirtualBox, so I'm going to walk you through how to set up VirtualBox for installing Ubuntu Core, and then I'm going to install it, and then I'm going to install a snap to it so you can see kind of how that process works too. First thing we need to get is Ubuntu Desktop. And the reason why we want to download Ubuntu Desktop is because we need this to install the actual Ubuntu Core image onto the virtual machine. Ubuntu Core does not come with installation media. Rather, it's something that you would flash to a device, similar to the way that you would actually create a USB boot device or something like that. So instead of actually creating an image or an ISO file that we can install onto the device, we're going to have to boot to the live image, and then we can use that to then download Ubuntu Core and then flash it to the virtual hard disk on the virtual machine. So to do that, you can just go to Ubuntu's website and just download it right here and then click on Ubuntu desktop and then you can just get the latest version of it. It's pretty straightforward there. And that will take a few minutes to download depending on the speed of your internet connection. So once that's downloaded, then we'll be ready to uh, boot this to a virtual machine. But first we need to create the VM. Go ahead and install a virtual box. It's really easy to do that. Once you have a virtual box installed, you can then create the VM. You can see I have Ubuntu Core uh, on another VM right here. And that's the one I've been using for dev work. But I'm going to create a new one right here. I'm just call it Ubuntu dash core dash demo. And that's just going to give me a new image that I can then use for uh, this particular demo here. So once I have that typed in, it's going to detect that I want to use Ubuntu 64 bit, which is fine for this. Now I'm going to give it two gigs of RAM or four gigs. If I wanted to, two gigs is going to be more than enough for this VM because Ubuntu core is a pretty minimalist distro. It doesn't require that much. So two, two gigs would be fine for this. And uh, 10 gigabytes is more than enough for this as well. It's a pretty small footprint. Uh, installed is about a gigabyte. So uh, 10 gigabytes is more than enough for this particular uh, installation. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. I can use VDI, VHD. That's not really relevant. You can pick whatever you want. And then I'm going to use dynamically allocated, which is the basically just going to add new uh, capacity to it rather than uh, allocate the entire disk at 10 gigabytes on my uh, host's hard drive. So once I have that, I'm click next. And this is just going to say, where do you want to store it? I'm going to say right there and click create. And that's going to give me the shell. Now, the, the shell is created. I need to change a few settings here. The first thing I need to do is make sure that EFI is enabled. EFI is needed because a Ubuntu core VM will not boot off of a BIOS based virtual machine. You need EFI. It's going to look for uh, EFI and it's going to boot that. And then the EFI is going to be able to read the image and then finish booting the operating system. Now Ubuntu desktop will work with either BIOS or EFI. So I can still boot the ISO that I downloaded and still be able to install this. Now I do need to set two processors for this or two cores, and that's needed for Ubuntu desktop to boot. It requires a dual core to boot. So once I have that uh, to set to two cores, that's good. The other thing I need to do is set this right here to the ISO file for uh, the machine that I downloaded right here. And I already have it selected right here, so I can use this uh, right here. And that is so that it will boot off that ISO file the first time I turn this virtual machine on. And the next thing I need to do is change the networking to bridged adapter. And what that's going to do is basically grab an IP address from the DHCP server as the same one that the host is going to be using. So in my case, it's going to be my firewall. So it's going to get an IP address on the same uh, network as the host itself. And that'll allow me, that'll allow me to SSH into the box once I have that uh, machine ready and running. So let's just leave that as is for now as a bridged adapter and click OK. And that's all of the settings I need for this particular uh, virtual machine. Once I have that, I'm ready to go and boot this thing up. So now we're ready to start this. I'm going to click start right here. And this is going to launch uh, the virtual machine in the new window. And this is where I want to 
select try uh, Ubuntu, and this is going to boot it into a, a window that allows me to choose to either install or try it. So once you get to the screen, just click on try Ubuntu and that's gonna finish the boot process. So once the VM boots, you can come over here to Firefox and launch Firefox. Firefox will load up and this is where we're going to download the media. So we're gonna go to CD image and um, .ubuntu.com. And this is going to list a bunch of the distros that are available from Ubuntu. We're interested in core obviously, and we're gonna go with 22 and then going to stable and current. And that's gonna bring us to this page here. Now this does have a couple of options on here because we're running on x86 hardware or AMD 64 hardware, whichever you prefer. We're gonna download this image right here. And that's going to bring it down to the local storage for this particular uh, ISO that we have right here. So now that we've downloaded that, we can start a terminal session. So I clicked on activity and I'll type in terminal up here, and that's going to give me a link to uh, click on that. I, so it'll allow me to launch the terminal emulator right here on this particular desktop. Now, once that loads, I wanna get to root access. So we can do that just by typing in sudo dash I. Now to do this, I need to know the disk name that is going to be a part of the virtual machine. So you can do fdisk uh, L and that's going to list the disks that are available on this VM. And usually it's going to be at slash dev slash SDA, which is going to be the particular disk that is going to be that 10 gigabyte disk we created when we uh, provision this virtual machine. So I just need to know what that is right there. Next thing I, I want to use uh, another utility to write the image or to first read the actual disk image from the file that we downloaded. And then I'm going to use DD, which is a imaging software that comes pre-installed on this particular desktop that allow me to write the image to that virtual disk. So to do that, well, I need to get into the download folder. So let's do that. And um, let's do CD slash home slash Ubuntu and then do download right here. And uh, this is where I downloaded the image to right there. Now to use the uh, extraction program for the XZ file there, I'm gonna use XZ cat, which is basically gonna allow me to take that file and pipe it into DD. So I'm gonna use XZ cat like that. And then I'm going to basically just give it the file name. And so I typed in U tab, and then it's going to allow me to then pipe this into DD. So I'm going to use DD and then uh, then the output uh, file or basically the output destination for DD to write to is going to be slash dev slash SDA like that. Now I want to give it the the basically the the block size which is what BS stands for. So I'm going to do a 32 megabyte box uh, 32 megabyte block size uh, which is fine for this and then you can do like status equals progress or whatever it is you want to do. And then lastly, we want to close that out with sync to ensure that it actually syncs the disk um, to ensure it finalizes the write once everything has been written using the command. So let that run and it takes a few seconds or minutes depending on the speed of your drive. Now, once that's written, we can reboot the machine and it will reboot a few times. But once we have the machine rebooted, it reboots a few times. If it finishes the provisioning process, we're going to be able to use Ubuntu Core on the VM. So I'm going to close out this terminal right here and close out the browser if you want to. Uh, you can do, it, do whatever you need to, but come up here to the power button and just uh, power off the machine and then go restart. And that's going to ask me to restart and that will reboot the machine, but it's probably going to eject the media and then it's going to boot up into Ubuntu core and we'll come back when that finishes. The next thing we need to do is actually in a browser, we need to get to an Ubuntu one login so that we can associate Ubuntu core with uh, a particular login. So it'll import the SSH keys from Ubuntu one. This is good for dev purposes. So uh, when I go to login.ubuntu.com, I can click on login or create up here in the top right. I'm already on that screen, so I'm just going to log in. If you don't have an account, just choose the option and sign up for an account. I'm going to put in my uh, email and my uh, credentials here, and uh, that's going to allow me to log into this particular um, account right here. And uh, once I've logged in, I, I'm going to want to import my SSH keys. Now, I've already imported my keys here. 
Now, you can do this however you so choose uh, to generate the keys. Uh, the best way to do it on Windows is really just to launch Terminal. And uh, with Terminal, that will give you the ability to run SSH-Keygen. And uh, that is also available on Mac and Linux as well. And this is just going to generate a public-private key pair uh, using RSA. Notice where it writes it. So it's going to write the, uh, the private key to this file right here, and it's going to have a uh, associated pub file. And so to do that, uh, it's going to ask me for a passphrase when I create this as well. I'm not actually going to create it. It's already did this, but I'm going to get the public key. And to do that, you can just type in cat and then type in uh, id underscore rsa uh, dot pub, and that will actually write out the public key. So once you have that, it'll put the output to the screen, and then you can copy and paste that down into this box here, and then click import SSH key. And then you'll get something that looks like this right here. And once you have that, now you can log in to the machine for provisioning. So to do that, let's come over here to my uh, virtual machine that I have currently running, and it's gonna ask me to configure this. And I need that email address so it can import those keys. So I'm going to press enter to configure this. And it's going to uh, attempt to you know, set up the network and do other things like that. So it's attempting to grab an IP address right here. And it got one from my uh, network. And then I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to put in my email address from Ubuntu 1. And that's going to allow me to import the SSH keys uh, from Ubuntu 1. Um, so it says... I typed in my account wrong, I put in two Bs. So let's go over here to um, the, the box there and uh, remove that B and hit done. And that's going to import the uh, keys into this particular uh, virtual machine. So now I can SSH into this box. So let me uh, pull up my terminal again and let's launch a terminal window right here. And this will give me uh, PowerShell. And I should be able to SSH in using the username I gave it and also the IP. So 10.0.1.65 is the IP address for the VM. And that will then allow me to import the, the public key to my local store here. And then it's going to ask me for the passphrase, which I'm going to give it, which I gave it when I created the key pair. And now I am logged into the box. So this allows me to run snap commands if I want to. Now, apt is not a part of Ubuntu core, so anything that you want to install on Ubuntu core needs to be done through snap. Now, snap is just basically a package manager and anything that you install in snap will run as a container on the Ubuntu core instance. So it has very tight security around whatever is running on this particular build. So if I wanted to do snap install, uh, Docker, I could do something like that. And that would install the, you know, the Docker desktop. I'm sorry, the Docker daemon on this thing. So I could run Docker containers on this particular build or something like that. So again, very easy to use once you get it set up and you can use this for dev purposes rather than having to install Ubuntu core on something like an actual Raspberry Pi or some other kind of device for development purposes.